I'm Shane Hewitt. Chris Abel joins us now. We're getting into tech, tech, and all things nerdy. <laughs> Chris, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Good. Feeling very Glad nerdy. you're back. Yeah, feeling yeah. very nerdy. I love it. This is so good. All right, let's dig into some of the nerd and uh, some of the conversation that you have brought forward to us, including, and I'm very excited about this one uh, down the road here. We get there. Uh, Meta glasses doxing strangers. So we'll get to that one in a second. Where do you want to get started today? Because speaking of such high tech things, it looks <laughs> like some of the tech juggernauts are backing out of the game. They are. So this is fascinating. Microsoft has now revealed they're getting out of virtual reality. Now, this is not a statement in terms of virtual reality not having a future. No, definitely virtual reality has a big future. But Microsoft is just realizing it's not going to include them. So Microsoft, over the years, they've done a great job in, in jumping in on big, huge new business when it comes to certain things. Xbox, video games, they did great with that. But then you think of MP3 players, the Zune did not do well. Or you think of smartphones, Windows mobile phone, that was a bit of a disaster. And so Microsoft is realizing that, you know, they're not doing very well when it comes to virtual reality. Their headset, the HoloLens 2, they've decided they're going to cancel production on it. And all the work that they were doing on HoloLens 3, they've decided to just quit. So what they're going to do is they're going to acknowledge the fact that the, the companies who are going to make a big success of this is going to be Apple with their Apple Vision Pro headset. And of course, Meta, who owns Facebook with their Quest 3 headset. And they've decided that the best strategy for them as Microsoft is merely to start making software for those headsets. Acknowledge those are the two that are going to win the race. And then Microsoft will just come up with a version of Office that will be usable for virtual reality. <laughs> but don't worry, it'll still crash. <laughs> and you have to reboot yeah, to get your email. Yeah. Uh, the, the well, blue okay, so of it, death, but you live it. <laughs> but you live it in front of your eyes all day, every day. Okay, well, this is not a big surprise. Microsoft's hardware endeavors have always been not great. Apple backed out of the autonomous car game. They're not the only ones that have adjusted. And it doesn't mean they're yeah. not just going to buy some other startup that has a great idea anyway. No, that's it's often the case. I mean, uh, you take a look at Google. They initially created Google Video. It didn't go well, and so they ended up buying YouTube in order to be able to stay in the game. So this is kind of the, the path that's in front of a lot of big tech companies when it comes to artificial intelligence or virtual reality. Google had Google Glass. We just had a conversation. Even Ray-Ban is in that game, more so with other companies as well. So things have certainly changed over the course of time. All right, Chris Abel is here. Hello Kitty is not a cat. Yeah. I don't know. It's some weird. And it, it, depending <laughs> on where, which country you go to, it uh -huh. is like a sick love affair. Oh, yeah. Uh, so a Toronto-based company called Kidamento, a fantastic company. They make little tiny digital cameras for kids. Fantastic cameras that have animal designs. There's one that's shaped like a panda, another that's shaped like a little tiny cat. Uh, these are cameras that are designed for small hands, so they're ideal for kids. And the whole idea is that a lot of parents, they want to encourage their kids to get into photography, but they don't want to give their kids a smartphone. They don't want their kids to be connected to the internet and share their photos. So what they've done is they've come up with cameras that are designed like digital cameras specifically for kids. They are fantastic. So the good news is their designs that they've been doing to become successful, the, the panda that I mentioned, all the animal designs have been great, but now they finally have their first licensed property and they've just released the Hello Kitty version of their camera. So you can get a pink camera that's got ears on it and Hello Kitty's little face on it. And it does the same things as their other cameras do. In fact, this one has a thermal ink printer so that kids take photos with little kid-friendly software, and then they can print the photos and share those photos by handing them out physically to people. Here's a photo I took, mom, check that out, rather than having to share it on the internet. I think it's great. They've just announced it. They're, they're doing their first launch, $140. They say supplies are limited for this year, so if you want to get one for Christmas, I'm giving the hot tip. Now's the time to check out at kidamento.com. That's a great idea. Uh, Hello Kitty is a, a, a little girl, by the way, that's fashioned yes. in, in the way of a cat. And uh, so when you have your uh, Kidamento Hello Kitty camera, do you have to shake it, shake, shake it like a Polaroid picture? 
<laughs> you know, that would be a great feature. And I know there's a lot of people who, you know, didn't get to experience Polaroid cameras that would love that. But no, because it's using a thermal ink uh, printer, it's like a little printer that's in the camera. You press a button and boom, out comes the photos. They print in black and white, but digitally, they still take and save uh, color photos. What sound does it make when it prints the picture there? Uh, that's me doing the little zzzz. It's the <laughs> printer good. sound. I yeah. love it. Chris Abel is here. I'm Shane Hewitt. KFC, this is the strangest one of all the ones. KFC says no fighting yeah. games. Like, what happened? Is the colonel going to war? Well, this is interesting. So uh, many people may not realize, but in Japan, KFC has a very special cultural status. So the way that I'll say how this works is that here in Canada, when Christmas Day ha comes and families are like, oh, I don't want to make a big meal. I just want to go to a restaurant and all the restaurants are closed. A lot of time, traditionally, we go to a Chinese restaurant because they're still open. That's sort of a big thing in Canada. It's Christmas. Let's go to a Chinese restaurant. In Japan, it's the same thing, but with KFC. Families that don't want to make a big meal will just go to KFC. And so KFC has become synonymous with Christmas in Japan. It's very, very special. So I, the video game designer who's behind the fighting game series Tekken, is such a big fan of KFC, he wants to include Colonel Sanders as one of the fighters in his game Tekken. And he's been campaigning with KFC to try to allow him to do that as a collaboration. KFC finally had a meeting with him. They've listened to his idea. He said he has all sorts of creative ideas to make this happen. But uh, they've turned it down for now. I think the idea is that Tekken is an international game and it's quite violent. And I think that uh, here in the West, if we suddenly got a violent game where Colonel Sanders is kicking people's butts, uh, we may not see it in the same light as the Japanese. But the, the game designer, Yoshida Kamada, is still trying to encourage people. He's trying to talk about it in public interviews. He wants to get public support behind him. Come on, let's get Colonel Sanders out there into the ring and start fighting fightings. I was said, I was told it was so popular at Christmas that you almost have to pre-order it in a lot of places so you can get your KFC in time. Um, we've got to be quick. 30 seconds. Glasses, Ray-Ban glasses to dox people, which is basically expose uh, sensitive information about them. What's this about? So two students at Harvard University, they took the existing Ray-Ban meta glasses that Facebook offers. Uh, these are glasses that have cameras in them. You can take photos, you can take videos. Then they added to it an artificial intelligence that uses facial recognition. What happens is they go for a walk on the street and the glasses can automatically detect the faces of strangers walking around, do a quick connection to the internet, locate those faces online to photographs, and then give you the person's phone number, their home address, and wow. addresses of places that they've worked. Within That's not seconds, okay. That's yeah. crazy. My goodness. All right. Tech, tech, and more things nerdy. Chris Abel, thanks for popping in, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. When they say Big Brother's watching, imagine if your glasses are, are telling on other people, revealing their information. That's some scary stuff. Holy cow. Shane Hewitt in the Night Shift. We will be right back.